Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna be doing Quixel Bridge, which is a free library of photo scanned assets for Blender. So I'm super excited to just jump in here and create something fun. Um, Quixel Bridge has a ton of great assets. So let me go ahead and minimize my face here so you guys can see my screen. Um, this is Quixel Bridge, so you do have to sign up for an account. But what's great about this is all of this is photo scanned, super realistic, and you can literally import directly into Blender. So this is gonna be a super exciting little tutorial here. Not sure what we're gonna create yet, but we're just gonna go ahead and make whatever kind of comes to mind. So let me go ahead and adjust my screen for my live streamers here. So this is Quixel Bridge. Um, basically, as you scroll through, you can look at different materials, different 3D models, there's plants, um, and then there's entire collections which are gonna have things that are like related to each other. For example, this will be a shrub lens or shrub lands where it has like different terrain packs, a lot of great assets in here that you guys can take advantage of. So definitely go ahead and download this, sign up for an account, and then um, once you have this ready, you basically wanna just adjust your preferences so you can export directly into Blender. For example, this, uh, we'll just pick something I've already have downloaded. I'm gonna go to my purchased. Now these I did not pay for, it just is called purchased, but these were all free. So let's go ahead and pick an asset here that we wanna import into Blender. Um, this one looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do this. So this is already downloaded. And if I go ahead and click export, it's gonna immediately export it to Blender. It'll take like a quick second, but uh, it's working on it. And as long as you have Blender opened, you should be good to go. And right here we have our 3D scanned asset. Um, now I'm an EV, so let me go ahead and switch over to cycles here, GPU. And let's go to render view and see if everything has showed up. And there it is. Um, now you're not gonna see much right now because we don't have an environment set up, but what I wanna do is I actually wanna go ahead and use this new add-on that I've been using called Pure Sky. And let's go ahead and create a Pure Sky. Give that a second. And now we have this awesome daytime environment scene just like that in the click of a button. So this is our 3D scanned asset. As you can see, it looks really good. Um, so I'm gonna try to use that for our render today. We'll probably just be rendering a still image, although you can use these assets to actually animate things as well because they are 3D objects. There are materials and there are 3D objects that you can actually go ahead and import. So right now, this is a 3D object, not a material. As you can see, there's nothing really on the bottom, but on the top, we have these nice surfaces that are photo scanned. It looks really, really good. So let me go ahead and snap to my camera. I am actually under the scene, I realize. Where is my camera here? I'm gonna bring it up, GZ, snap to it. And I think I'm gonna bring it way back in, in our scene here. Another thing you wanna do when you're dealing with assets this large, you actually need to click on your camera and you need to adjust the end setting, which is gonna allow us to see further into the scene here. What is the website? Where did you get the picture? Um, this is called Quixel Bridge. So, and again, I will be posting this to my YouTube channel for you guys to go ahead and check out. But I'm gonna actually just go ahead and pack this camera up. And for my end, I'm just gonna choose a thousand. That way, for the, the, the purposes of this tutorial, we can see far into the dis distance within our scene. So, perspective lens, 85 millimeter. We're gonna stick with something like that. Um, I'm also gonna adjust the angle here so that we are actually facing more towards the sun. And I'm gonna zoom out here. Now this is a very, very big 3D asset as you can see when I zoom out of my scene here. So I'm gonna move my camera way back. Now I'm gonna snap back to that and I'm going to go ahead and lower myself on the Z axis. As you can see, this is just an absolutely massive scene, um, which is great because if you're looking for something like this, you found it, this is what you wanna use for giant landscape scenes, things like this. Now there's other possibilities as well. You can actually create your own terrain with other add-ons, but this for the purposes of my tutorial, this is probably what I'll be using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pack this up to a proper location here. I think that looks pretty decent. Maybe even go for something like that. Um, and I'm just trying to set my scene up here so that I can figure out what I want to piece together, like how I want this scene to look. This looks really good though. So, and again, look at all the detail that you're getting with these, with these assets here. Now, ideally, this would probably be more useful for something from a top-down perspective, but in our case, I'm probably just gonna use our side view here. So let's go back over to Quixel Bridge and check out some other assets that we have available to us. I've used some of these indoor assets before. 
This is a nice concrete brick that we can go ahead and import. There's really just so many things to choose from. These are all the things that I've purchased, but let's go ahead and figure out a theme for our scene and kind of go in there and put something together. So let's scroll through here and see what we have. Now for my lava scene, for example, I actually use these Icelandic rocks. So why don't we actually just recreate that scene? I'm actually gonna delete the thing I already imported. Apologies, guys. So I'm gonna actually add this into Blender. Exported successfully. And now guys, remember a quick way to get to your object if you're unsure where it is, you click on it in the hierarchy and then you can press the period key. But first let me delete this. Now I know that my object is in the center. So if I press the period key, it'll immediately bring me to that object. I'm gonna go ahead and delete our default cube. I'm gonna click on our camera and I'm gonna completely reset the location because I know that I wanna be closer to my new object, which is this lava rock here. So guys, we're gonna deal with some smaller objects here because I think those big objects are just a little bit overwhelming for what we're trying to create here. Um, and still this photo scanned asset looks incredible. So let's go back over to Quixel Bridge and let's import a few other things. There's some more volcanic rocks that we can go ahead and take a look at here. So I'm gonna export those into Blender as well. Again, I've already downloaded these, but it really doesn't take much time at all to download this stuff. And as soon as you hop back over to Blender, it'll immediately give you your object and it'll already have it pre-selected for you. So that's really nice. So I'm gonna to go to my top-down scene here and I'm just gonna go ahead and move this over here. And then I'm gonna add in a plane and I wanna show you guys a really cool trick. So right now, obviously this plane isn't perfect for our scene, but let me go ahead and call this lava scene, all caps, almost all caps. But I'm gonna head back over to Quixel Bridge and I'm gonna go ahead and search for my texture that comes with this pack. So I'm gonna go over to the Iceland um, asset library and I'm gonna scroll through and I'm gonna find a really nice texture for our ground. This looks pretty good. This is Icelandic sharp rock. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. So you guys are seeing me download this for the first time, which is awesome because you know how easy it is. You literally click download and then you wanna click on export. Give that a quick second to export over to Blender. Now, once it is successfully exported to Blender, you're not gonna see anything right away. But if you click on this plane here, or really anything, if it would let me, um, you go over to your materials tab and just find your material. In our case, I believe it was Icelandic Sharp. I believe that was it right there. And as you can see, our material has imported over top of this, but the scale is gonna be way off. So let's go ahead and first apply our scale for the plane. And then let's go over to shading and let's go ahead and adjust our scale of our texture. Right now it's at one for every value, but I'm actually gonna set it over to 0.3 and let's see how that looks in camera view. Let's go over to the rendered view. Looks pretty good. Still gonna make it a little bit bumpier with displacement as well. And let me go ahead to our camera and I'm gonna back it up within our scene. So we're looking a little bit more like that. And then I do think I'm actually, as much as I love pure sky, I think I'm gonna actually add in just a regular HDRI for our scene here. So instead of pure sky, I'm actually gonna go back to that add-on. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and I'm going to create a new background texture, environment texture, go to my HDRIs, and I'm gonna go ahead and locate my mountain scene. And it is not giving me my thumbnails, but I think I remember what it was called. I think it was Cape Hill. I'm pretty sure it was this one. Yep, I was correct. So it is Cape Hill and we're looking good. And actually this is a great angle for our shot. So I'm gonna keep it at this. And already guys, we have a really cool scene with just three things, a plane, two objects. And again, you're not gonna really be able to tell that this is just a flat plane, especially once we add a key feature in here. So guys, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click on our plane. We're gonna go over to solid view. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide, pop open this little window on the bottom left here. Make sure you guys can see that. And I'm actually gonna give this a few cuts. I'm probably gonna give it 10, Okay, I can only give it 10 cuts apparently. All right, so I'm gonna give it 10 cuts and then I'm gonna hop over to our modifiers, add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm gonna add displacement. I'm gonna create a new displacement texture. Go all the way down here to our texture properties. Instead of image or movies, I'm gonna experiment with different versions down here. So clouds, distorted noise. Let's check out distorted noise and already this is looking really good. This is what I'm looking for. 
I'm gonna duplicate our subdivision surface modifier, bring it below our displacement. And as you can see, things are starting to get smoothed out, which is perfectly like exactly what we're looking for. And then what we need to do is we actually wanna go ahead and bump this subdivision up one more time so we have a lot more bumps within our scene. Now, something I'm gonna do is check inside my camera view and actually scale our plane down a little bit and bring it up on the Z axis. And let's just go ahead and take a quick look in the render view to see what this looks like. It's not looking terrible, but I think I'm gonna go back to my textures and I'm gonna try something like clouds. That looks a little bit more realistic. Again, you can bring this down and adjust it as you go. But that's just a quick way to add some like waviness to the ground. Again, guys, you can go ahead and choose whatever you want. You can choose Voronoi, you can choose Stucky. There's so many different options here. And you can adjust the mid-level. I'll probably just keep it to zero. And then of course the strength as well. So I'll probably keep mine at about 0.3. And then I'm gonna move it just to where um, both of these meet the floor plane. And I think that looks good enough to kind of give us a little bit more displacement. And again, you can bump up your levels for your subdivision even more, which will add even more detail to the ground here. And again, this is just, all this is doing is it's taking the plane and it's kind of splitting it up into different pieces and adding that displacement. And that looks pretty good. And of course you can shade smooth as well. I think I'm gonna bump my strength up just a little bit. And again, I'm gonna place my floor in just a way where it's intersecting these two rocks here. So now let's go back to our render view and go ahead and take a second look at what we have. This looks pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'll probably start adding some other elements to our scene now. Again, there's not much going on here, but I do think it looks pretty realistic for what we've done so far. Um, another thing you can do is go under your light paths and you can bump up these light paths a little bit to get slightly more realistic um, renders here. So I'm just gonna bump everything up to 10, one, two, three, four, and a total of, of 40 max bounces. Everything's looking good. For our sample count, I'll probably do 300 and I'll keep the dimensions as they are for now. Um, now another thing that I'm going to do is select my camera. I'm actually going to add depth of field. Do you have any online courses? Yes, and this will be up on YouTube. This is Blender. Um, so I'm gonna go add some depth of field here. I'm gonna select my front rock here and I'm gonna create some very, very intense depth of field just to start out and kind of narrow in on what we're looking for here. I think I might do like an f-stop of one. That looks pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, I wanna kind of throw more rocks on the, on the ground because I want this thing to really be realistic looking. So I'm gonna scroll back through my asset library and I'm just gonna take a look at some other options here. There's gonna be a ton of rocks that you can download. So guys, just look through the library. There's literally thousands. Here's one that I haven't seen before. I'm gonna go ahead and download this. This is gonna be a very similar type of rock that we had before. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this and I'm gonna export it directly into Blender, just like last time. Go ahead and give that a quick second. Um, again, yeah, you have to wait a second, but it's totally worth it because again, these assets are all free. Now, as you can see, if we go back into solid view, it's just easier to see the new object we have selected. There it is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it into a place where I think it looks good. In fact, I probably might go back into camera view, rotate this new object around, and put it in our foreground. So I'll bring it towards the camera, probably down on the z-axis. Now if we look in rendered view, this should be pretty blurred out because it is in the foreground. But again, we can put this thing wherever we want. So if we want to really close in on our scene, we can put it right here in the corner, right? So let's say we want to appear like the camera is looking right be behind this rock, almost like peering out onto the distance. We can go ahead and frame our scene like that. And I actually think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll move it a little bit further left here. And I think that helps to set the scene. Now that looks really, really good. So let me go ahead and move my face a little bit for you guys. I realized I was kind of blocking the whole scene there. Apologies. But let me go ahead and minimize that. Someone says, add me, sir. Um, I won't be, I'll, I'll add you after this. I'll, I'll add you after this. Um, I assume you mean follow me on Instagram. Um, I want to put a few more rocks in our scene here. So I'm probably going to take the same rock, rotate it a bunch of times, and put it on the ground. So let me go ahead and find just a nice Icelandic rock that we can use. Let me scroll all the way back up. Let's start over here. These are some boulders, of course, as well. 
Icelandic rock formation. Icelandic cracked rock. Let's go ahead and scroll through here. Some of these look pretty good. I don't think they perfectly fit in with the nature of the ground, but let's go ahead and just take one of these boulders. Let's download this boulder set. I think it's the same one, just rotated twice on the preview on the right hand side here. But we are gonna go ahead and take this and put it directly into Blender. So let me export that to Blender. Exporting to Blender, give that a quick second. As soon as that's done, should just be right in our scene here. And there it is. Now from the top down view, it should be a little bit easier to move this around. Perfect, let me go to our rendered view looking good so I'm probably going to take this scale it down a little bit and place a few of these around the scene just to add a f another element of um, like realism to this so let me just see what that looks like so far looks pretty good again this is just something that you can do to elevate your scene just a little bit more scale this one up so now this one can also be in the foreground and I can rotate this any way I like I think that looks pretty good and you can do the same thing here rotate this one scale it down move it up All right I mean, it's just something you can do to add to your scene right you want to have these sitting on the floor in a way that makes sense as well like the way I just had it did not make any sense so let me go ahead and rotate this and place it in a more organic way. And I'm gonna scale this down, completely rotate it this way as well. And you can't really tell it's the same rock as long as you do a good job of rotating said rock. And I think that looks pretty good. It just helps kind of solidify the scene, give us a, a better idea of like what is happening within our scene. So now guys, I wanna show you a really cool trick that you can use as you're creating these environments and these scenes. I want to go ahead over to our shading tab and I want to click on instead of um, object here I actually want to click and choose world and now zoom out until you see your nodes there they are right there um, and then I want to go ahead and add in a texture coordinate node and you guys will see while I'm doing this in a second go ahead and add a mapping node as well make sure you guys can see this I'm gonna zoom you in on my screen my live streamers here so you want to add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node plug the generated into the vector, and then plug your vector into your vector. Now you're gonna see that nothing changes, and that's because we haven't changed any values. But if we go ahead and adjust our Z value here, look at what's happening to the background. See how we can immediately shift the background around and completely change our scene's lighting and environment? So this is extremely powerful. I'm not sure why more people aren't teaching this in their tutorials. In fact, I've probably seen maybe one or two with this technique. But it's extremely useful, especially if you want to completely change the lighting of your scene. So I highly suggest using this technique when you are throwing things together um, very quickly too. So we can still have our mountains in the background and we can have an extreme lighting change if we so desire. Now I personally like it better when everything is in the shadows with just a slight hint of highlights. So I might go for something more like this maybe like that in terms of framing I think that looks pretty good but you guys can literally choose whatever you want um, that's the total creative freedom that you have with this scene and again these are all free things that I'm using here including the HDRI everything is free now I suppose we can turn this into our lava tutorial since a lot of you guys were requesting that anyway and I've been slacking on putting that one out on YouTube